we keep Cooper in our prayers. And he said it was five years ago today. today that he fell, and he's doing good, so we keep him in our prayers. Are there any others? Announcements or prayers? Have we heard any more about Pat? No. Uh, actually, I saw Pat. What day did I see Pat? Thursday. Thursday. Um, uh, last week was a whirlwind. So I saw Pat on Thursday. She's doing well. Um, she's in, she is in the hospital, but she seemed to be doing better than the day before. So hopefully um, she's on a recovery swing. But um, it's also one of those, I didn't really get much knowledge, information about what's going on. So I'm just using my best judgment on that one. But, um, yeah, she she was strong. We had a nice conversation. It was not how I wanted to meet them, but it was good to meet them and have a conversation. So, are there any others? If not, then let us take a moment of silence to pray and prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Give thanks to God. We thank God for the joy of jumping rope and the laughter of playing we from. Give thanks to God at all times. We give thanks to the cool waters of a cool and a hot summer day and the way the water surprises us when we first jump in. Give thanks to God at all times and for all things. We give thanks to God for brighter lights making our nights brighter and for water lights which tickle us away after a nap. Please join me in singing Seek Ye First, Blue Book 333. We lift our prayer, our confession and prayers in the name of Jesus, our Savior and God. Amen. Amen. The God who challenges us is also the God who encourages us. The God who confronts us is also the God who accepts us. Be assured that God is with us even now, accepting, guiding, and forgiving. 
My friends, I joyfully declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. reconcile with one another, forgiving and showing love to one another. The peace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. Good morning, everyone. Do we get to mingle? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So if I can have all the children come up, we are going to teach our song to everyone. Shadrach, Meshach, 
and Abednego.
volunteers who took this huge group of kids. We had 25 on one night and kept them engaged and learning and having fun, kept them fed and safe. So thank you very much to all of you. And now, do we have a nursery? We have nursery, okay. If you are three or four, you can go to nursery. And everyone else will go to kids' church. So Sunday school room. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Open the eyes of my heart. It's a song. Oh, I guess stand, please. Scripture lesson for today is Psalm 77, 11 through 15. But I will remember the Lord's deeds. Yes, I will remember your wondrous acts from times long past. I will meditate on all your works. I will ponder your deeds. God, your way is holiness. Who is as great as a God as you, God? You are the God who works wonders. You have demonstrated your strength among all peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people. Redeemed the children of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. And, uh, and our second, yeah, and our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter six. Verses 10 through 17. Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and put on God's powerful strength. Put on God's armor so that you can make a stand against the tricks of the devil. We aren't fighting against human enemies, but against rulers, authorities, forces of cosmic darkness and spiritual powers of evil in the heavens. There, pick up the full armor of God so that you can stand your ground on the evil day and after you've done everything possible to still stand. So stand with the belt of truth around your waist, justice as your breastplate, and put shoes on your feet so you're ready to spread the good news of peace. Above all, carry the shield of faith so you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word. So, 
I know this is VBS Sunday, and I'm not going to stay on this long, but I would be remiss if I did not talk about the decision that was handed down on Friday. Um, and I know that even in this room, we have strong opinions on both sides of that issue. Now, I'm not going to talk about the decision. Um, I don't think my pulpit, though my actual pulpit is hiding, I don't think my pulpit is where that conversation needs to happen. Instead, we're going to talk about what we are not going to do here. We are not going to say things about each other like you hate all women and want them to die. We are not going to say things like you want to kill babies. We're not going to tear each other down. We're not going to do that here. Because I, I can see out of the corner of my eyes two people I know that are on diametrically opposite sides of this issue. We're not going to start dehumanizing each other and reducing each other down to this you hate things. Even if we feel strongly, and I have strong opinions about this topic, but we're not going to do that. Feeling strongly about something does not give you the the, the right to dehumanize somebody on the other side of the issue. And also, my friends, I can guarantee you not one person in this room had anything to do with that decision being made. No one in this room is powerful in that degree. It's just not the way that it is. No one here is on the Supreme Court. No one here is elected to office my knowledge, if you are, tell me so I know. Um, this is not the room of the powerful. We are not going to tear ourselves apart because of this issue. And I say this not because I think you will, but because I saw a clergy group, a clergy group that I'm part of, talking about this issue and it was, it was ugly, very ugly. And so we're not going to do that here. So the issue of the week that I need to address is we are not going to go into battle with one another. We're not throwing our swords on and our shields on and battling one. But then we have this issue in Scripture, where the author of Ephesians is telling us to strap on armor for battle. And I literally just told you, no, we're not going to battle with you. So if we're not going to fight each other, we're not going to draw swords and stab each other, who are we fighting? Who is this battle that we are arming ourselves Fight. Now, verse 12 gives us our answer. These aren't human forces that we're fighting. Rulers, authority, forces of cosmic darkness, spiritual powers of evil in the heavens. These sound like high and mighty, powerful, demonic forces, well beyond human. Now we can assume, we don't have to, but we can assume the author is speaking a little bit hyperbolically here. He isn't actually speaking of fighting demons, a literal demons. Do you get to remember the situation that the churches found themselves in? The Romans wanted them to stop. The Jewish people wanted them to stop. They were in constant battle to survive as a church, as a people, as a gathering of people, as the body of Christ. They were in constant battle to simply survive. 
Not constant battle to figure out what is right and wrong. Not constant battle to have theological nuances and to understand things and have conversations about when life begins. No, they were in constant battle to even say, Jesus is my Lord and I worship Jesus alone. That's the battles that they are having. Those are the battles that they have to strap on their armor to fight. Truth, justice, peace, faith, Salvation. They have to strap those on to even survive. So we can assume when the author says you're fighting all of these things, we're not necessarily talking about literal non-human forces, but the powerful, the elites, the authorities, the ones that want to take them down. That is the battle that the author is preparing us for. But one of the reasons I've actually never preached on this passage before, one of the reasons I never come back to this passage is because I don't like the battle imagery. I mean, part of that is because I'm borderline pacifist. I can own that. But part of it is because we miss what the author is trying to say. When we think of battle, we don't think of Jesus healing the slave's ear on that Thursday night. We think of Peter pulling his sword and chopping away at people. Like, that's what we think battle is. But that's not the battle that the author is preparing us for. The battle that the author is preparing us for sees the cross as a victory. Sees, being, sees our Savior being executed by the authorities as a victory. Now, if you go into battle against somebody and they crucify you, clearly you didn't win, is the conventional wisdom. The battle that we're talking about here is not one that's won with swords and force. It's one with standing and speaking and sacrificing. It's won by being humbled. It's won by refusing to bow to anyone but Christ. <laughs> so then you may ask yourself, okay, we knew who we're fighting. And we know what our victory looks like. Then what is the battle? <laughs> well, think of the places where truth and justice are not welcome. Think of the places where the powerful use anything but truth and justice to get their way. <coughs> where deceit is a means to power. Where claiming Christ but being greedy. <coughs> claiming Christ but harming those that are marginalized. Claiming, claiming Christ while pocketing the prophets. That's where this battle is. <coughs> I know I've said this phrase here, here already, and I will say it again over and over and over again. These battles is where we can speak truth to power. Where we can look at the powerful and say, no, you are wrong. Where we can risk ourselves stand up to the authorities. The battle is where bringing truth and justice into the conversation puts us at risk. That's where the battle is. So recall, our 
call is to not take up literal arms. Our call is not to take over the conquerors. Our call is not to threaten. Like, we don't do this by force of the fist, force of the knife or the sword, or today, force of the gun. That is not the battle that we are called to. It is a spiritual battle. It is a battle for hearts and minds. The evil ones fight with lies and deceit and injustice. We fight by standing with truth and justice and peace. So are you going to stand against the authorities? And again, not tearing ourselves apart. This battle is not to tear the church in half. If you are here, you are in relationship, even if you don't like each other. You are in relationship. You are the body of Christ. We are not called to tear ourselves apart by throwing on our armor. But are you ready to stand in truth and justice against the authorities who use injustice and lies and violence? Because that is the that is the battle for our hearts and our minds and our soul and our church. Put on the belt of truth. Put on the breastplate of justice. Shoes of peace. And the other two that I can't come up with without pulling it off of my head. Just stand and speak. Please join us in our hymn of response that is uh, Standing on the Promises. Say 
There we go. Please join me in the affirmation of faith that comes from a brief statement of faith. And life and in death we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom we alone worship and serve. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the Word proclaimed, and gives us the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls on women and men to all ministries of the Church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of the people on silence, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, and powered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks, and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Please be seated. Um, we come to this wonderful part of Christian worship where we can pray with one another and lift each other up uh, with a sharing of our joys and concerns. Um, we This morning I have a prayer request. Nora's stepmom, Grace, had an attached retina and she had surgery this past week. It went well, but there's still quite a bit of recovery. Um, and I don't know if some of you have known, but my father-in-law had a stroke last year and is still in the process of recovering. Um, and so they could definitely use some prayers of healing and some prayers, um, just the, the help that they need. We're thankful that family is there to help them out, um, but just a lot going on there. So we pray for them. Um, I'm looking through here, she's not in there. So yeah, we also pray for Pat Collins and recovery. Uh, this morning, we also pray for Donna Luckman, Rick Mulvania, Elsie Chamberlain, Paul and Diane's son John, Heather Chapman, Cooper, uh, for Price Boy, Mike Gillo, Marilyn's daughter Candy, Jan's daughter, Glenda and Kirk's daughter Paula, our members and friends in care facilities, including Pat and Jim Collins, Jesse Borgman, Ken Stinson. We pray for all of our veterans and service personnel and their families. We, for all who have been sentenced to life without parole, to all fire, law enforcement, and EMS personnel, and all suffering from war and violence in Ukraine and around the world, and for our workers at Mission Starfish Haiti. Are there any other joys and concerns to share with us? Absolutely. Thank you for thinking my mother as she recovers from stroke and rest. What? My mother, uh, Pam. Pam, thank you. Stroke and rest. Stroke and rest. Pray that she doesn't have. Yes, we pray for Pam who has a broken wrist and we pray for no surgery. Are there any others? If not, then let us turn our hearts and our minds to God. Loving God, we come before you this day asking for your loving embrace upon us. In this world of deep division, in this world of chaos, in this world of hatred and darkness, of greed and all evil, we ask for your presence upon us. We ask for your peace to be with us. We ask for your love to be felt in all of our hearts. 
On this day, loving God, we lift up many who are struggling with health concerns, with illnesses, with injuries. We ask for their healing. We ask for energy for their healers, their caregivers. We ask that all that all may go to healing and to comfort and to peace. We also lift up those who are entering the ends of their lives or who have passed from us. We ask for peace to be with them. We ask for peace for their families. We ask that they, they feel the love of our Savior in these days. We lift up to you those who are struggling with ailments of the mind. We ask that you give them healing, that you point them towards resources that can help, that you strengthen us to embrace them. And all of our concerns, loving God, we also lift up our joys. We lift up the joys of this Sunday where we can celebrate our kids and remember our VBS. We lift we celebrate the beautiful weather. We celebrate people in the sanctuary ready to worship. Now, living God, as we have lifted our hearts to you, we have lifted our voices to you, we have said our concerns, both the said aloud and those that we say silently on our hearts and minds, now we join our voices together as one. Using the prayer Jesus taught his friends and disciples praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. the ushers please come forward we have returned to collecting the offering mass folks will come around with plates for you to give your offerings and tithes you can still drop your offerings in the plate and at the back of the sanctuary or you can give online at our website God has shown us the meaning of generosity and the beautiful diversity of creation in the overflowing love of Jesus Christ and the never-ending gift of the Holy Spirit. God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be a community that honors each other, to serve others with joy, to share our love and material possessions. Let us rejoice in what we have been given and in what is ours to give. Will the ushers please come help us give our offerings? strength to offer our whole lives to your service. 
Grant this church and its leaders the wisdom and discernment to be good stewards of these gifts. We pray that we, they will be encouraged in their work and that their ministry may be rich fruit in your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to wait just a second there, Lord. Sorry, we didn't plan this out super well. And I shot my a text, but she didn't see it. <laughs> no texting in church. <laughs> really? It's a tool. And it, I would much rather not have a phone. All right. Are you ready? space where we can find it, but that goal should not be to strap on armor and battle each other. The armor of God is to battle those who have the power to wield and use that power for injustice and lies. So let us stand up with truth, with justice, with peace. Stand up strong. Stand up faithful. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God be gracious unto you and lift up countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Hallelujah.